This is Brett Allison from Intellimagic. I'm a senior performance consultant and director of technical services at Intellimagic. And I wanted to provide a quick demonstration of uh, capabilities around finding buffer credit issues. Buffer credit issues are typically caused by discrepancies in the I.O. workload capabilities of a, an initiator or a target. Usually the targets are the storage systems and they're extremely fast and oftentimes the initiators are hosts that are maybe fast but they're oversubscribed or they're operating in an MPIV way where they're um, sharing multiple uh, virtual uh, fiber channel ports with actually one physical and so there's some contention there. There's also uh, problems sometimes when the uh, access across the fabric is not uh, even and so you have some saturation uh, maybe on one port out of two initiators on a host. And so I wanted to show basically what I do to identify that. So we have uh, some reports that will easily show you if you have buffer credit issues. And in this case, I've got a few different ports here, three different ports. They're ISLs and they all have a significant amount of buffer credits. I consider a significant amount of buffer credits more than um, 20 or 30,000 buffer credit shortages per second. Oftentimes when I see these on ISLs, um, the, the ISLs are on the same switch oftentimes and it appears that the shortages are um, caused by the same uh, issue if they're on the same switch in particular. Now the other thing I like to look for when I see these shortages is um, transmit patterns. Transmit on the fabric and then on the VMware uh, systems uh, to see where my my issues are because I usually don't see the ISL uh, I don't usually see rather the F ports or the initiator or target ports showing the buffer credit issues but I usually do see some pattern that matches the buffer credit shortages on one of the F ports so what I've done is I've selected uh, one of our charts that shows the uh, port transmitted and I've got one port here this happens to be slot 10 port 10 on a switch ending in 4030 um, and th so this matches the the time period when I saw the buffer credit issues on the ISLs and um, additionally I looked at the VMware throughput and the, the read throughput for a host named USSISSQL T10 that matches the pattern exactly and then looking at that uh, VMware host uh, close or the VMware guest it runs on uh, an ESX host um, that is starting with uh, BS and it, it you can see these are the initiator ports on associated with that physical host um, they're not actually the the host ports they're actually the the F ports on the switches related to that but I can see a significant imbalance in the port traffic so there's there's an issue here where I've got a host that is reading data off of the the storage in the fabric but it's not able to read it as fast as it's being sent and so there's some kind of delays there with the buffer credit shortages which is kind of a pacing mechanism and I also in addition see an imbalance in terms of the host um, activity on its two paths so uh, there there's a couple ways to, to look at this and resolve it um, Ideally, you'd like to have the traffic evenly going across the two different um, ports, and that can be done um, with active active configurations. Uh, it can also uh, be done by having multiple data stores that are hosting the active data and assigning those data stores to different physical paths. So there's a couple ways, but namely you want to try to balance things a little bit better in the environment, and that should take care of the buffer credit shortages. Um, if that doesn't resolve the issue, you really have to look at the um, this different speeds and feeds on the, the wire here, and um, it may be a situation where you actually have to upgrade um, the, the host port um, to a higher speed. So I hope that was helpful. That was just a real quick overview of bu looking at buffer credit issues in the fabric.